Welcome to a live cupping of some samples that I have received from a gentleman called Liam, um, who is the northern representative of uh, CoffeeNet. Um, he has sent me, based on uh, a meeting that we had a few weeks back, some washed coffees from Colombia of various different producers. Um, their lot numbers are 489, 490, 498 and 546. Beyond that, I know the grower, um, the region and the cultivar based on these sample sets. So they're all washed. Uh, 489 is a tabby, 498 is a red bourbon, uh, four, 546 is a Keturah and same two with lot 490. The roast colors look pretty even. There's maybe a slightly darker coloration to uh, lot 546. I can do some color analysis to make sure that what I'm tasting is the same across the board. Um, so we're about 12 minutes into contact with the water now. So um, on a cool day in the roastery, we're, we're probably ripe to, to get going. So I'm just gonna have a single pass for each of these cups, have a think about it, and then convey exactly what I'm tasting. Okay, so they're all a very clean cut. There's a, a, a broad citrus kind of acidity with, with all of these. Um, they're nice and clean, they're nice and sweet, uh, which is all good. There's maybe, I don't wanna say age, but, um, but, a, but a touch of a cereal characteristic on, on this coffee, uh, so lot 490, uh, which could be a roast thing, it could be uh, an age thing. But uh, let's have a think about some of the flavor descriptors. So this one here, a um, little bit creamy. Uh, there's some orange, um, like a sweet orange, uh, pretty well balanced for, for a coffee from Colombia. Um, nice touch a honeyed note on my palate um there's maybe a touch of biscuit and maybe that's to do with the rose color we'll see okay more orange with this one the citrus is a little more prominent um again there's a, another degree of creaminess inside of the cup really quite quite nice, very well balanced, uh, which is the type of thing that I enjoy, certainly from washed coffees, because washed coffees are my preference uh, when I'm purchasing. Okay, so citrus in here. The, the citrus is a, it is a cross between orangey and a little bit lemon-like as well. Um, one of these had a bit of a hibiscus type of nose to it. And I think it was actually cup one. Um, let's have a go on the last one. Mm. Mm. So there is a bit of cerealiness on this last cup. I've got a feeling it's to do with the roast color um, rather than the coffee. So seeing through that again, citrus, orange. So broadly speaking, all of these cups are clean, crisp, sweet, with um, a, a distinct citrus character. Um, they, uh, the, the sweetness is displaying in sort of honeyed notes and, and caramel. So imagine that, that, that caramel colored um, sugar. I, I don't wanna go so far as saying muscovado or anything like that. Uh, but um, definitely on that caramel browning sec uh, spectrum uh, of sweetness. Really quite delightful to be fair. Um, uh, would I be able to get anything out of these in, in the production roaster? I'm pretty certain that I would. Do I have a, a preference? I'd probably say cup two and uh, cup three. So that's lot 498 and lot 546. Um, 
what I would prefer to do is assess these again in another couple of days just to uh, make sure that the coffee has had time to, to rest a little bit. Because it's very possible that because the coffees are roasted so light, they just need a little extra time to open up some. Uh, this is also um, something that I'm learning is, um, is apparent within the Loring Roaster. So um, I, I do need to spend a little bit of time with these coffees before I commit to purchasing. And of course, you know, I've got to make an assessment based on their price, their availability, what our portfolio is going forward. And, and do, do any of these producers have stories that um, I can uh, hook into as a person and maybe then transfer and use as th in our marketing uh, for the business? Um, there are some producers that may have had long-standing relationships with CoffeeNet um, that I would find most interesting um, whilst working with a new company. Um, but anyway, broadly speaking, broadly speaking, these are clean, crisp, sweet, um, and exactly what I would describe a washed Colombian to, to do and be. So I'm pretty happy with these. Um, what I'll do now is as far as as far as coffee buying goes is I'll go back to Liam we'll open up a line of discussion about the availability of the coffees and um, and do, does he have any information from them uh, that would support my uh, buying um, I would also probably take a take a punt so to speak and purchase one of the coffees um, get them roasted inside of the roaster and see exactly how they they perform this would be a new engagement with a new green coffee and porter. Um, so one has to commit at some point to purchasing a coffee so that you can put it through your paces on your apparatus under the guise of your business. Cupping is great when you've received samples from people, um, but it, uh, it, it sometimes doesn't exactly extrapolate to what the roaster does. So um, to recap, four coffees that are all washed, various different uh, uh, cultivars, uh, tabby, red bourbon, and a brace of couturas. Um, they're, they're pretty delightful. I have received roasted samples, so I'm at the mercy of somebody else's roasting um, color. Uh, I would like to roast these to a slightly darker color to see where um, more sweetness and balance comes, but that comes when I've committed to purchase something. So uh, thanks, Liam for sending these. Uh, I will send back um, some information and, uh, and request some from you as well. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, a cupping of some coffees from a coffee and, coffee and porter and some of the sort of thought processes that I would go through as a buyer uh, for my company blending room. Anyway, cheers.